Lesson 1.4, it's counting principle and the binomial theorem. I will start with uh, part one, it's the factorial notation. If I want to read this one, I don't read n factorial. This sign is the factor, but we read factorial n. And what does it mean when I say factorial n? It means you are multiplying all the number from n, all the preceding number till one. So when I say factorial eight, it means I'm doing eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. And I can decompose it differently to be able to simplify. So factorial eight, I can write, for example, eight times factorial seven. I can write it even eight times seven times factorial six. It's linked to what I want to use for the simplification. We will see it in the application. So I'm doing the application to get more the how to how to simplify the factorial. Uh, part. So if I have factorial 7 over factorial 5, all the time you look guys which one is greater? 7 or 5? Five? 7 is bigger. So I need to decompose it to reach factorial 5. So 7, I know that it's 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 till 1. And 5 is the same from 5 till 1. So, but it's easier to write instead of factorial 7, 7 times 6 times factorial 5 over factorial 5. Then I simplify it and I will get the answer. 7 times 6, 42. Normally, those will get it in the part without calculator. Factorial 6 over factorial 5, exactly the same. Which one's greater? Factorial 5. So I'll decompose it to reach till factorial 3. It's 5 times 4 times factorial 3. Then I will simplify and I'll get 1 over 20. Factorial 8 times factorial 4 over factorial 10. I will decompose factorial 10 to reach till factorial 8 because it's, I will simplify more instead of till factorial 4. So I will have 10 times 9 times factorial 8. I will simplify. And now here, I need to decompose. I need to find the answer for factorial 4. It's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Over 10 times 9, then I will simplify. 3 and the 9, I will still have 3. 2 and the 10, I will still have 5. So it's going to be 4 times 1, 4 over 15. Now we will do uh, one more. Then we're going to do some simplification when there is n. So factorial 7 times factorial 5 over factorial 10 times factorial 6. I will simplify the 10 with the 7 and the 6 with the 5. So the 10 I will reach till factorial 7 and the 6 till factorial 5 will simplify. And I still have 1 over 10 times 9 times 8 times 6 and I will get the answer. Be careful guys, factorial 0, it's a rule, it's equal to 1. Let's do now some simplification with n. So I have, for example, n times factorial n plus 1 over factorial n. So which one is bigger? Factorial n plus 1. How are we going to decompose it? It's n plus 1 times. What do we have before n plus 1? We do minus 1. n plus 1 minus 1, it means we have n. Excellent. What do we have before? It's n and minus 1. Then minus 1 and minus 2 and minus 3 till n till reach to 1. But where I should stop here? I should stop here just where I have factorial n because I need to simplify it. So the n is still there here. Factorial n plus 1, I will decompose it. n plus 1 times factorial n. We simplify the factorial n, and then the answer is n times n plus 1, and then the, I can develop n squared plus n. Here, I need to be careful, guys. There is a minus here, so I cannot simplify before I will factorize. So I need to factorize. Between factorial n and factorial n minus 1, I need to find a common factor. All the time, the common factor is going to be the smaller. Which one is smaller, factorial n or factorial n minus 1? Factorial n minus 1. So I need to decompose factorial n. It's n times, what do we have before n? n minus 1 factorial. And what is my visible factor? My visible, my visible factor is factorial n minus 1. What I still have from the first term? It's n minus 1. Because when you factorize, how you will find what you still have in the parentheses? You divide by factorial n minus 1. This expression by, divided by factorial n minus 1 gives me n. And this one gives me 1 over n plus 1. Now... I can simplify by decomposing factorial n plus 1 because it's greater than n minus 1. What do we have before n plus 1? It's n. I didn't reach yet what my target. What do we have before n? It's factorial n minus 1. Then we simplify, and this is my final answer. With the practice, you will see, guys, it's very easy. Part 2 in this lesson, it's permutation and combination. What does it mean, permutation? Permutation, it means an arrangement. When I say arrangement, it means there is an order. The order is important. To be able to solve an exercise like this, guys, we have two methods. We have the formula and we have the box method. 
Normally, I prefer the box method if you forgot the formula. But if I want to use the formula, the formula is NPR, N should be bigger than R, and uh, the formula is factorial N over factorial N minus R. Now, when I'm choosing, when N is equal to R, it means we call it directly arrangement, and the answer is going to be factorial. And guys, you will see it in the application the way. And I will do the box method also when I'm doing the application. Let's see. Uh, let's the, just give you the combination formula. Combination, it means this choice. I'm choosing. The order is not important. I want to choose two girls from this class. I don't care who I'm, I picked first, but what I care about is that I want to choose those two girls. About the result, I care. The notation first, it's, I can write it an R like this, or C and R. And the formula is factorial n over factorial r times factorial n minus r. Also, I can do it on the calculator. In the Lebanese program, we write it this way. I'm choosing 2 out of 8. In the IB program, we write the biggest number here. We write 8, 2. And in the American, we write the 8 under a little bit down here. So those are different notations that you can see. And also, we can write this one in the IB 8, 2 in the IB program. Now, let's do some examples so we get what I'm saying. If I have the word candle, how many arrangement or how many words using the letter of candles can I form? And I will be more precise with no repetition. I'm, I don't, I'm not, I'm, I cannot, for example, do the letter C, the word C, 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 C. So it means an arrangement, it's a permutation because I'm using all the and the letters so it's I'm, I'm permutating six out of six so it's uh p6 so it's factorial six over factorial six minus six it's it's factorial zero so it's one so it's factorial six so it's a permutation if i do the box method it's much more easier for me and i feel it's really direct uh, application it means you have six places one two three four five six how many possibilities you have for the first place i have six letters i need i can pick I have six possibilities, so six. Six, it means I have six possibilities. I can put either C, A, and D, L, and D. Now, I took a letter. Those letters are here, C, A, and L, D, E, one, two, three. Okay, so let's say I took the six here. I have the C. How many possibilities I still have for the second letter? I still have five letters, so five possibilities. I took a letter. When you still have for this one here, four. I took a letter, three, two, one, so it's factorial six. So the box method... I can say the box method because you can write it like this in a box. It's much more easier and the less complicated than the formula. You can either use the formula or the box method. Let's do another example. How many words of three letters? Three letters mean how many places I have. I have three places. It means order is important. It means it's P. It's not, it's not a choice. Using the letters of candle, you can form also no repetition. It means I'm not allowed to do the word CCC. So if I want to use the formula, you are picking three letters out of six, so it's 6P3. This is the formula or the box method. For the first place, how many possibilities do you have? You have six possibilities. You took the letter. How many still letters do you have in the, in the, in the bag, for example? You still have five. Excellent. And then four, so six times five times four, so it's, I have 120 possibilities. More. How many words of six letters can you form, but starting with, the, with C? I'm still in the same case. How many Cs do you have? You have just one C. So you can pick just one out of one, and then you still have five letters to permutate, so it's 5P5. Or if I do the box method, for the first place, how many possibilities I have? Just one. Because I have one letter C. I removed the C. How many letters do I still have? I still have five in my hand. So for the second place, I have five, then four, then three, then two, then one. So it's one times factorial five. Remark, please, it's very important. What does it mean, anagram? Anagram, it means you are using all the letters of the word that you, you have as you are doing the permutation. But you need to be careful. I cannot have a repetition. What does it mean? How many anagram I can form with the letters of the word C? If I look at this word, I have seven letters. Excellent. Permutation is factorial seven. Seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. But if I switch the S's between each other, the words are the same. 
and if i which the e is between each other the word the word is still the same so you need to divide so the answer is factorial seven over how many s's i have three so divide by factorial three times i still have another letter e times factorial two because i have two because if you switch the e's or the s's the words is still the same nothing gonna change so that's why we need to divide by the number how many letters are uh, have repetition if three factorial three if two factorial two is five factorial five now one more example i need to show that two n plus one factorial factorial two n plus one times factorial n squared over factorial n plus one squared times factorial two n is equal to this one so i'll start from here guys first i will separate factorial n squared it's factorial n times factorial n, and I will separate those two. Now, I think about simplifying. What I will simplify is n plus 1 with those, and which one is greater? The biggest is n plus 1, so I will decompose it. And I can also simplify this with this one. This is great, so I will decompose it. What do you have before 2n plus 2 minus 1? It means we have 2n plus 1. Then minus 1 again, we have... 2n so it's 2n plus 2 2n plus 1 factorial 2n i stopped here because i have here and here factorial 2n that i can simplify factorial n plus 1 i so i will decompose what you have before 2n plus n plus 1 factorial it's n because minus 1 so i can do write it n plus 1 times factorial n and this one also i can simplify the factorial n and the factorial and what i still have guys i still have 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 over n plus 1 times n plus 1. Did I reach my answer? Not yet. I can factorize here by 2. So it's equal to factor of n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over n plus 1 times n plus 1. Then we simplify and then I got my final answer. That's it and it's proved. Now, a small remark, if six person wants to sit on a round table, it's not the same as when they sit on a rectangular table. When I sit on the round table, any the first person that will sit, anywhere it will sit, it's as, as the same because there is no hat for, there is no corner for the round table. So for the first person when it comes to sit, wherever this person will sit, it's the same. So at it's, uh, as it has one possibility. But when this person will sit, for example, now I still have order. Now I can stay, say, for example, I'm sitting on his right, on his left, opposite to it. Then the five remaining, they will have five, the f five possibilities, then four, three, two, or one. So all the time when I have a round table, the formula is factorial n minus one. But when it's a rectangular table, no, because there is places. Look, guys, that is many places because the rectangle or the square table is not like the round table so here when the first person will come to sit it has six possibilities it sat down the second has five four three two one so for the rectangle or square table is factorial and i think that's it we will do part three in the other